on Gather Around Nerds. Today we're going to be talking about the nervous system. This is what you need to know, your dogs. You've got your two main branches. You've got the central nervous system, which is made up of the brain and spinal cord, also known as the sensitive bone snake. And your peripheral nervous system, which is a bunch of stringy boy nerves that feels things and talks to your muscles, glands and sensory organs to tell your brain and spinal cord what's good. It also tells your organs and shit what to do. So if you're having a mad sesh and your central nervous system is like, whoa, make the little work, it'll go do that. In the central nervous system, the brain and the spinal cord do different things. Like, the brain receives and processes sensory information and then responds by controlling your bodily functions, whereas your bone snake receives information from the body and then tells the brain. It also receives motor signals from the brain if you want to, for example, get out of bed and film a video about the nervous system, it'll go right off you go then and send that to the good motor neurons and cool buddies to make it work. Your peripheral nervous system has a couple of branches. We've got autonomic and somatic. So what we got is um, the difference between these two are pretty, pretty clear. Your somatic nervous system will carry sensory information from receptors and nervy boys to the CNS and motor information from the CNS to skeletal muscles for voluntary movement. Like, yeah, when you're getting a bag of goon from... Cut, 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 cut. What your autonomic nervous system does is it regulates organs, glands, and processes like breathing or heart rate, and it tells your brain what to do and what the go is. Um, this is usually stuff we can't control, but my mate Jonty is flatlined like 10 times by himself and he's come back alright, so I don't know what these scientists are on about. Alright, there you go. Autonomic nervous system has two little subdivisions of its own, the sympathetic and the parasympathetic. Sympathetic activates muscles and glands and organs to prepare the body for vigorous activity or stressful or threatening situations. Like if you're running from a bear, the parasympathetic however calms your body down and helps maintain the internal body environment. And that, my dear friends, is called homeostasis. And that's just the first dot point. Get keen, kiddos. Here we go. Conscious and unconscious responses. Conscious response to a sensory stimulus is a reaction that involves awareness. It's voluntary, intentional, and all that good stuff. For example, if a bloke at the pub is sizing you up, you can make the conscious decision to glass him. An unconscious response is a reaction to a sensory stimulus that doesn't involve awareness. For example, if that bloke's mate glasses you back, you don't have to think about running for your goddamn life. Call that an autonomic reflex. Alright, here's a spinal reflex. It's an unconscious, unvo involuntary, and automatic response to stimuli initiated within the spinal cord without the brain having to think about it first. Here's an example of how that usually goes using the glassing scenario from before. Number one. Receptor cells on your head detects ouchies from the glass colliding with your scalp and then sends a message about it to a sensory neuron. 2. The sensory neuron carries the information to your spinal cord. 3. An interneuron within the spinal cord relays the message to a motor neuron. 4. The motor neuron carries the message to the muscles that would get your head out of the way of the man with a jagged schooner. While this happens, 5. The message of the sensation is carried up the spinal cord to the brain, and once the brain processes that sensation, it realises that it's pain in your head from getting glassed. Dog point two done and dusted, boys! There's a neuron. It's a cell that receives, processes, and transmits information. Here are the real important bits. Dendrites, they're just long tentacle buddies. Axon is a big string. Myelin sheath, little fat pillows. Um, axon terminals, little blobs that give out chemicals. Two neurons go together, and boom, there's a synapse. And there is the synaptic gap. Right, neurotransmitters. 
Anyway, neurotransmitters are ones that are excitatory, stimulate postsynaptic neurons to work. Um, the main one of those is glutamate. Ones that are inhibitory block or prevent neurons from firing. The main inhibitory buddy is GABA. G-A-B-A. Don't know what it stands for. Something cool, probably. Neurotransmitters are funny because they're stubborn little bastards. Um, each one has a special shape, like a key. The neurotransmitter searches for the right shape, receptor site, and the postsynaptic neuron, like a lock. And if they match correctly, uh, they bind, and the neurotransmitter causes change to the neurons. Parkinson's is a degenerative neurological condition, which, as you can tell from the sound of that, isn't too bloody flash. Symptoms include tremors, involuntary shaking, muscle rigidity, and slowness of voluntary movements. Non-motor symptoms exist too, like mental health problems and problems with cognitive functions. Just like the doctor said to me. Here's the thing. Dopamine carries messages allowing the smooth and coordinated function of the body's muscles and movements. If normal degeneration occurs in the substantia nigra, less dopamine is produced and the primary motor cortex doesn't get enough information due to impaired activation by dopamine. Movement commands are disrupted because information regarding how and when to move are incomplete or not received. That's about all you need to know. Um, we're gonna some I'm gonna come back next week to Luna's Learning Corner and I'm gonna teach you uh, how to steal darts off a homeless man good night it's your lunch time this is your lunch time you can stay in here all you want I've already had my lunch it's your lunch time I'm just saying it's your lunch time